Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing? On this table, I pretty much have everything that runs on power, battery or cord, that will cut for me with the exception of the miter saw which sits in there and the table saw which sits in there in the large tool garage. Uh, now I did not get out the power planer, which I have in there, and that would technically do a, a, a little bit of what this does. And I did not bother to get out either of my routers, which also will do some of what these do. So I do have two routers, a corded and a cordless, in the trailer. The cordless is a 20 volt DeWalt. The corded is a three quarter horsepower DeWalt, corded. I have two of those actually, they match. One's inside, one's in the trailer. So other than those tools, I think everything that doesn't run by hand, because I have some hand saws, is right out here. So I'm gonna go through these really quickly to show you what I have. This video does a couple of things. Number one, it documents my inventory. Number two, for insurance purposes, it works out well to actually have this on video. And number three, it may interest some of you to know, you know, what particular, you know, what kind of saws do contractors have. And this is by no means all of them. This is simply what I have. Uh, if you want to see a lot of saws in Milwaukee, almost exclusively in Rikita, you should check out renovations and repairs. That guy, he has tools. I thought I had a tool addiction. That guy, I envy him. Richard. Love you, man. <laughs> so anyway, let me go through these really quick. I'll show you what I have. We'll wrap it up. It's windy out, and so if, and so if this is all uh, really washed out with the sound because I don't have a lapel mic yet, uh, my channel needs to earn more money. So by the way, like and subscribe, please. <laughs> Get me a lapel mic. <laughs> Let's crowdfund this one. <laughs> I'm goofing around, sorry. So anyway, uh, I have this mic set up, but what I will do is I'm going to move a little bit closer and if necessary, I'll get my face up out of the screen and then what I can do is if the sound is just really bad, I can go ahead and do a voiceover and then I don't have to try and figure out how to, to dub exactly what I'm saying now later on so it all matches up because I would never be able to do that. All right, folks, other than the miter saw and the table saw, this is the only other corded saw that I own. And indeed, yes, if you're looking correctly, this is a Ryobi. It's the only Ryobi tool that I know that I own. And this is probably set up with a diamond saw blade. And I use this exclusively for masonry when I'm doing tile installs and I have to cut the underlayment for the tile. This is what I use to do that exclusively. I'm pretty good about cleaning this off with the air hose. So I believe that as much as the concrete dust could actually tear a saw up, this will get a pretty long life out of it for how often I do tile. That, and that's exclusively why I bought this saw and set it up exactly like that. The saw never changes configuration at this point. So I'm really happy with this. This is like a $50 purchase and I got that idea from a buddy of mine who had a junk saw and he decided to use that for exactly what I use mine for. I'll... Here I have a 60 volt grinder and I have a number of different kinds of blades for it. And so this is really, this is very useful depending on the job that you're doing. And it does cut. So I'm including it in this, in this video because it does cut things. Who doesn't love a multi-tool? Love this thing. This is like, while it's not fine surgery, this is something that is just incredibly, incredibly useful to a contractor, to a handyman. I don't know how we got along before this thing. All right, here are the double mint twins, and just as sexy. So first off, jigsaw, barrel handle, flat shoe. And this I bought in response to having this one this jigsaw, exactly the same model, barrel grip, is set up permanently with a Collins coping foot. And it was non-trivial to actually get this thing installed. It was a little bit of disassembly and reassembly in order to make sure that this is working right. So this is exclusively used for cutting copes on trim. The reason why I have this one is because of this one. Because this is permanently set up with a Collins coping foot, and I was working with a couple of guys at the time that I had this, that when they wanted a jigsaw, they were actually grabbing mine because I guess mine was better. <laughs> Um, and because it was set up with the Collins coping foot, they were having trouble running it for just, you know, straight cuts or whatever they were trying to do. So because of that, I went ahead and broke down and bought a second one and left the flat shoe on it. So it's nice to have a pair of these for that very reason, that this is convenient, handy to grab, to do whatever, finish cuts, whatever it is. But this one, I don't have any transition. If I have to go to crown, trim, or whatever, I've got this one ready to go. In my original kit, years and years ago, when I finally upgraded from 18 volt, uh, the big batteries, to the 20 volt square batteries, this was in that original kit. This is actually a brushed tool, and it's going strong for demo. This is, it's amazing what I have actually demolitioned with this particular tool. So, love this thing. 
Um, I used to use a corded exclusively. What I loved about the corded was you had two different ways you could insert the blade. You could insert the blade basically vertically, and you could also flip the blade and insert it horizontally. So it really was a little bit more functional than this. If I were to change this out, that's what I would do. And it may be possible that the brushless version of this tool actually will do that now. But the corded, that was very convenient. Otherwise, this, this thing has power for days. But I wanted something for a little bit tighter space, and so I got the basically the one-handed uh, demolition saw. I call all these things sawzalls. Thank you, Milwaukee. I, I'm stealing the name. Sawzalls. But anyway, this reciprocating saw, I really like it for smaller, tighter, one-handed maneuvering. This is really convenient to have as a complement to all these saws. This saw right here is a standard seven and a quarter blade right circular saw. No frills, no whistles, no bells really. It does, you know, have a couple of features like a rafter hook, um, you know, tool on board for changing the blade. Uh, everything is convenient as far as the adjustments go. Now this right here, this is my absolute go-to saw. This is the workhorse of my saws right here. And this is a six and a half inch blade left circular saw. This is an upgrade to my brushed original. It was original to the kit with the Sawzall. This is the replacement for that. The brushed saw has been retired into my home workshop. So this lives out in the trailer now. This is now my go-to saw. I love the blade left and also, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. There's an LED light that lights up the cut line, which is really nice. This is my go-to. I do like the upgraded rafter handle. Just gives you another option of what you're going to do with it when you set it down at a job site. Otherwise, it's effectively the same saw. With this also exception, they actually have a dust chute. And so you can actually capture the sawdust with a uh, shot vac. Nice, nice addition. Nice upgrade. If this is the workhorse, this is the piece de resistance. This is my 60 volt track saw. And I love this thing. I use this thing. I can't believe I did not have a track saw sooner. I saw Ron Polk uh, use one because I watch his channel a lot, uh, use one uh, for a long, long time, and then figured out that it's a useful tool. And I had a job that came up that would actually buy the tool for me. I built the cost of the tool into the job. It was this massive deck uh, out over water. It was a dock. And I had to do a lot of straight cuts as far as the edges. And this thing here was the tool to do that. I'm very, very happy in the fact that I was actually able to afford this in all three tracks. Lastly, I have this 60 volt D-handle worm drive style saw. This is a rafter saw. And this saw right here is just darn handy. It has all kinds of power. Had I been able to purchase this in a 60 volt before my buddy bought the kit, I don't know as I would have purchased this. But because I ended up having this, it honestly gave me an excuse to buy this thing here. Battery loads on top, otherwise it's all ready to go. This thing has power for days. Uh, I've used this a lot on framing jobs and I've been very, very happy with this. If this tool went down, I would buy it before the next job in order to make sure that I had it on hand. This thing, it's heavy, it's a beast, but when you need it, this thing will do everything you want it to do. And it's that easy to put them away. I'll show you exactly how I store them, then we'll conclude this. And of course, the two big corded saws right on the end in the vertical tool garage. So in the tool cubbies, I have actually done a lot of just kind of grouping. I often am going for drivers and drills, so that's why they're kind of in the prime first grab real estate there. But then I have my saw bank. So other than drill, 
rotary hammer and a drill in there, then these are starting the saws. So of course the D handle, I've got the power planer right back in there. Track saw, that seven and a quarter. Right beside this, because I am maxed out, I have taken advantage of kind of a, a horizontal divider. So here is the long uh, brushed, uh, here's the long brushed reciprocating saw. Up here is the one-handed reciprocating saw. Over here, I have first and foremost to grab, I have this, I have the six and a half inch circular. And then behind it, way back in there, if, if you can see it, that's where that Ryobi lives. And I don't grab that very often. Then down here, I have the multi-tool. Here are the routers that I didn't bother to bring out, the, cord or the cordless routers right behind there. In the same cubby, I have both of my jigsaws. The one with the Collins coping foot, I set off to this side because that one's quicker and easier to grab. And then right, and then right beside it sets the grinder. Uh, I do not keep a battery on the grinder because it doesn't fit in there. Now lastly, as far as anything that cuts down in here, I have this particular drawer. I'll show you what's in it. So in here, I have some hand saws, I have two coping saws, drywall saw, insulation saw for rocks wool, and a large axe saw. So that's it for the hand saws, but then I have blades, coping saw blades, jigsaw blades, Couple of extra attachments for the multi-tool, dado stack, copious amounts of grinder wheels, recipro reciprocating saw, rec reciprocating saw, lots and lots of multi-tool blades. and even more. Well, there you have it, folks. Things that cut in the Magic Trailer. I love the system of organization. I can be able to grab and go with a tool, grab the grinder, grab a jigsaw, and I'm not pulling it out of a box. If I had to have boxes, I have no idea how much space I would need, but I think it was estimated, what, 30% more space in order to accommodate the box, which has a lot of empty, you know, it may have some cushions, some foam, things like that. It may have some extra parts. But if you had to put everything, if I had to put everything in boxes, I'd go nuts. Uh, it's just, it's so easy to grab. And that's why I like also having batteries on tools. I grab this thing, I'm ready to go. I don't have to then hunt around for a battery. Now I'd be organized, I'd have batteries stacked up somewhere, or you know, you could have, have them on those clips ready to go, but it's just easier for me to have the battery on the tool. Hey folks, thank you very much for sticking with me. If you would like to subscribe down below and ring that bell if you want to get notified when I drop a video, because I'm not on any regular schedule, and maybe it'll be a video that you like, or maybe it's a video you're like, eh, maybe I'll pass on that one, and that's quite all right. I thank you very much though, because you're helping me grow the channel, and I do appreciate that, I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm saving up for that lapel mic. <laughs> all right, well hey, you all take care. Have a good one, because I know you deserve it. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna uh, take that table down. Catch y'all later, see ya. <laughs> See you on the next video. Bye. Hey folks, so here's my blade right saw. I do not use this honestly very often at all. I used to have it set up. The last time I used this consistently, I was doing siding. I had, we had a vinyl siding job. And I had it set up with a paneling blade because that's what I use. And it stayed that way for a long time. Then I needed one thing and I forget, I think I, I left my workhorse saw out on a job site and so this was the one. So I had to switch the blade out. Otherwise this would still have a paneling blade in it. I just don't go to the saw. I am so used to the other one with the blade left that this is just not the one that I grab. However, I will say this about this saw. It's powerful. It does a wonderful job. It's nice to have a seven and a quarter. But this battery, it's a DeWalt battery. You can see that, six amp hour set the saw down. This battery has been on that saw maybe for a year, certainly several months, without charging. It's been sitting around on that for I don't know how long, and this is what I mean about when I leave batteries on tools, I have zero problem with my batteries doing any kind of discharge. The one argument that I had heard 
The one argument that I did hear about not keeping batteries on tools is the safety issue. You grab a tool out and there's a battery in it, and so if you goose the trigger a bit, then you have a safety issue. I wholeheartedly understand and agree with that. I'm the only one in and out of this trailer consistently, especially these days now that uh, the, the guy I was in, work, in business with has moved to Tennessee. So it's just me. And therefore, I know when I'm grabbing a tool, it has a battery on it. And the only one I've had a real serious like, concern about is the multi-tool. Because you put a blade on that, and then that put that in. There's no safety lock on that. You can just grab that trigger and, and go. I think there is actually a safety switch, but I never have that on at all. So with that being said, that's the only tool I really am concerned about. After that, maybe the power planer, but the power planer does have one of those safety lock, safety triggers, uh, where you have to depress something and then actuate the trigger. So no issues. Oh, sorry, no issues at all. And that's why I leave my batteries on my tools. If anyone has followed the channel for a little while and heard me talk about tools, they'll know that I do run DeWalt batteries exclusively, 60 volt, 20 volt, and a couple of 12s. But I also do have the off-brand. I have Waitley. I have a lot of Waitleys. I mean, I might be 50-50 on the Waitleys with the 6 amp hour and the 5 amp hour. I think I don't have anything lower now. But this also is kind of one of the early knockoff batteries that I got in. And it looks like this. I've seen them a lot. I don't know if they're the same brand coming out from the same company, but they have this kind of yellow looking, almost like, hey, it's a DeWalt, but it doesn't really resemble a DeWalt at all, except that it fits and it runs the tools. And, you know, this is what I've got. I, other than that, there really is not any markings that I can identify for a particular company. I'd have to go way back years and years ago in my Amazon cart and figure out exactly where I got them. But I will say that I only have two and they're six amp hour. They have not the runtime that the Waitleys do and the Waitleys do not have the runtime that the DeWalt does, but the Waitleys actually do run a close second. But these, not so much, not so much. These are underpowered uh, as far as six amp hour batteries. So I have two of them. I'll run them till they die. I'll replace them with Waitleys or a DeWalt. Happy to have them. They've lasted a long time, but they have honestly lived a lot on my flashlights. And so that was, you know, they don't run a tool necessarily, they're just running a flashlight. But in this case, I happen to have it on this tool. It's been there for a little while, fully charged. Uh, it's been a little while since I've ran this, but this could have come off a charger too, so I'm not gonna verify. Yeah, it's been here months. I don't know about that. But anyway, just wanted to show you the other style of knockoff battery that I have, other than the weightless.